So what's up guys, welcome back to another video and uh, today we're doing uh, part 2 of uh, Decay by Anthony Stokes and uh, yeah I read it uh, this weekend it was a quick read and uh, yeah on Monday I read it again to prepare myself for this review so uh, yeah, let's get into it this video contains spoilers if you don't like spoilers or if you want to wait till uh, the Kickstarter campaign is funded and you receive your copy, click away right now because this is a spoiler rich review once more. Yeah, I'm say. The first cover looks amazing, but I like the simplicity of this one. <laughs> I like this one slightly better. Someone, something's lighting his fire. Yeah. So. Let's get into it. This issue takes place. Uh, the K issue two ta takes uh, takes a place where uh, issue one took where issue one left off. Start where issue one left off. In the aftermath of uh, if you missed it or not, uh, if you missed it or not, the K lost his uh, friend Marcus thanks to uh, a gunfire. To uh, yeah, a gang uh, yeah, to gang violence, at least uh, gun violence. Two gangs were uh, yeah, being each other on neutral grounds, but uh, the guns started blazing and hell broke loose, and uh, Marks got caught on the crossfire, and uh, yeah, DK tried to uh, reanimate him, but to no avail, and uh, eventually he got uh, shot and. But uh, his uh, friend, his girlfriend Jess, kind of brought him back from the death, and right now he's uh, he's uh, he's back to the land of the living, willingly, and he want and now he wants to avenge uh, his fallen friend. Like I said, the cover itself looks uh, looks colorful. It looks like less colorful than the other one, but. Uh, it has more. Uh, it shows uh, that he means business, and uh, I like the dark background in it. So uh, yeah, DK is, is back, and he's uh, ready to blow some f to uh, yeah to light some fires. So yeah, the creator is Anthony Stokes. Illustrator is Marcelo Oliveira. Oliveira, my bad. It's the Portuguese variant. I get it. And the letter at this time is SK. Could be a pseudonym or something, but uh, I don't know. And uh, yeah, you see his email, following on Instagram at, uh, hope it's still uh, up to date. On the web, it's come to follow his comic. And of course on Twat at Stokes the Writer, or Comic Book Ant. And yeah, since uh, this message is, uh, yeah, the same uh, random copy, copyright message that you shouldn't uh, share or publish it without its permission I'm just using it for promotional purposes so and yeah he can you can I re can reach out to him if it's possible maybe I can do a review for him is that okay Anthony was like no problem so uh, yeah here I'm doing my spoiler rich review so let's uh, get into the pages here you see uh, Jess kind of sleeping in her chair, and then it's uh, yeah, knock knock. Who's there? Me. I'll kill you. <laughs> Just kidding. When she uh, opens the door, she uh, looks shocked at uh, the shadow of a human uh, in the silver moonlight. R and th whoa, don't know why that happened. And she is yeah, shocked. So she sees. It's DK. And he's back from the death, standing in the light of the silver moon. And Jess is uh, more than uh, more than yeah. She's excited to see him. It means that her uh, her magic did the trick. <laughs> that uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. DK says, uh, "Does I sm I smell like shit right now? I look like shit, but he smells like it." But. <laughs> That's an inside joke. It's a funny one, and yeah, she hugs him. Glad that her friend is back to the land of the living, to the land of the living. And uh, 
go to the next page. Here we see a uh, deep guy uh, trying to uh, yeah take a shower, but uh, it suddenly takes his amulet off or his uh, quartz crystal. Looks like a quartz crystal or something else. But once he takes it off, he ch he's uh, gasping for air and uh, yeah collapse and collapsed uh, in the shower and uh, Jess uh, runs towards him runs towards the shower, opens the door and she sees uh, her friend probably the lover lying on the floor and uh, yeah DK DK of course he shouts if he's okay he's not responding so she puts uh, the crystal back on his uh, necklace and uh, he gasps for air and uh, yeah she says uh, Let's keep this on, which means that this uh, life force is probably uh, connected uh, to uh, the quartz crystal, to its amulet. And uh, yeah, if someone were to uh, rip it off, it could potentially mean he goes back to uh, into the afterlife. Right now, I'll take a sip of tea to uh, process this for a bit. But uh, yeah, let's keep this on. So she tells him to keep it on. Well, we're going a little too far. And uh, yeah, she asks. Uh, he asks where Marcus is, and she says he's at the morgue. That's it. It's called the morgue. It's where they uh, prepare the bodies for funerals or uh, to uh, to make to make them up for uh, their coffins. So yeah, it's a morgue. I finally got uh, the. I finally learned a new word today. Probably one I should have known before I read it, made this review. But uh, hey, you can't know everything. I'm still learning as well. It's not my native language. I know. So yeah, he needs to go. DK needs to go. So and yeah, she just tells him stay out of sight. And because yeah, of course uh, he's supposed to be. Uh, He's supposed to be dead and uh, into the into the afterlife, but uh, he's kind of came back from it. Gives me kind of constant in kind of fi fi vibes to it. So uh, yeah, when he l when they are at the morgue, he uh, DK opens the door, he uh, lifts uh, the the cloths up, and he sees uh, every and yeah, he sees uh, the gang members who uh, kind of went at at each other. So yeah, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, that's good enough. 8 panels is good enough, and yeah, he said no, when he sees who it is, he sees Trey lying there with, uh, with the bullets in his chest, or these wounds in his chest. And uh, yeah, he's not coming back. And, uh, yeah, here's the rifle, rifle the, his rifle, seeing the door opening, kind of a flashback to that moment and uh, DK sits on the floor reflecting on the things that happened and yeah with the bodies with the feet uh, of uh, the gang members around him and his coat on the, and a coat on the ground and uh, but uh, yeah as you might have seen it loose everywhere and loot everywhere but uh, his uh, body, Marcus, his mate, not this, not that kind of mate. It's uh, his friend. He's nowhere to be found. And yeah, he uh, kind of gives up there. And uh, Jess walks in and he asks where Marcus is. And yeah, she tells him that he had to, she had, they had to make move, to move up. So uh, they had to move up cremation to make some room for him. And uh, right here. She's, uh, yeah, no, how you call that? I wonder what it's called. It's called a jar or something, or uh, I don't know exactly how, it, how it's called. It's uh, where they uh, store the ashes in of uh, the ones they cremate. But uh, yeah, makes sense. And uh, of course, DK is sad because he, yeah, he cries. And yeah, she asks what happens, and the guy with the dreadlocks tray he shut up the party he decided to uh, and uh, yeah DK kind of got caught in uh, 
was caught a bullet because he was trying to uh, save his uh, his friend Marcus and uh, yeah and uh, Jasp had a friend that used to talk to him but he was always one to cause trouble that's what kind of fortunately is something that uh, often happens in those kind of communities in the states especially in the larger cities like uh, New York, Chicago and of course New Orleans where yeah honest uh, yeah hard working people and also in especially the the African Amer the Afro American community try to make something of themselves but there's always a kind of group that either wants to use them as part for political gain or they uh, want to or they tr or they try to ruin for the rest who tries to move forward and that's kind of and that's something yeah unfortunately that's something that uh, sort of movements don't like to address that th those things happen but yeah here we are it's kind of reflect I think that's kind of a reflection on it but yeah DK is sad he, w he, thought, he thought he could bring them back he could bring Marx back from the death but unfortunately that's not the case uh, and yeah here's uh, yeah, the, the other difficult ethical question you need to ask yourself and uh, yeah, what he yeah, what he asks himself, and that's a question you ask yourself if you want, to, if you want to, yeah, it's kind of something that I addressed in one of my uh, issues and one of my uh, scripts as well, especially in the third uh, issue of Jawa Warriors. It's it's a natural death, life and death. Death is a natural order of things that needs to happen, whether you like it or not. Because otherwise, things could uh, turn out quite diff, quite quite ugly. And uh, yeah, the natural balance needs to be there. And yeah, there's always a question because what happens? What if you bring someone back, someone close to you, someone you care about, someone you loved, they moved on to the afterlife? There's there's no telling how he will come back, and if if he wants to come back, and how he will come back is the other question because he could be an entirely different person or have no mind of his own at all, no memories of his previous life. So yeah, those are difficult ethical questions you need to ask yourself. So yeah. And yeah, he uh and yeah, if it wasn't for Trey he would have made the choice. But uh yeah. He <laughs> just kind of jokes, he tells him that he has a girl's voice. Who is here? And she asks him How did you how do you do that? You brought me back, you tell me. And here we are. There's a voice in uh, DK's head that's not uh, that's not entirely his. And uh, yeah, that's probably one of the si and yeah, like here what she tells him. It's one of the side effects of her ma of the voodoo magic. So he might come back, but uh, from what the, from the looks of it, there's another voice uh, inside his head. There's no uh, there's no telling who it is, but this uh, the voice of a of a girl, at least a woman. So, that's next he sees here. He tells him, does your friend have trace numbers? And here we go to, yeah, the revenge part. He wants to find Trey, uh, wants to find Trey's number. And, uh, yeah, the ga and, yeah, the members of his gang. And, yeah, here, they are sit they are standing at uh, what seems to be uh, some kind of a support supporter old bu abandoned building where the gang members sit with their uh, with their uh, yeah vehicles having a smoke and uh, doing some things on the phone in the light of the silver moon and, some and uh, DK nice splash by the way I love the details in it especially the fire here he prepares a Molotov cocktail, and we all know what happens next. He uh, throws a Molotov cocktail at uh, at the at the gang members. It spins through the air, sparks flying around it, and splosh! It hits a star. It hits straight. Uh, it's a target straight in the chest, and he catches fire. And yeah, of course, the other camera members don't know where where the hell it came from. 
and DK uh, could be a flashback or not. DK throws uh, them. It's kind of hard to follow. DK throws, uh, yeah, another mode of cocktail. This uh, is the guy Trey. He uh, shoots his gun, and uh, yeah, he looks him in the eye and ping. Apparently, the crystal in his around his neck uh, starts to shine, and uh, DK lights coming out of his mouth, out of his eyes. And apparently there's a crack in the crystal, which means there's a bullet wound here. There's a crack in the crystal there. So something I something happened is about to happen to him. And uh yeah. He uh stands in the fire with his uh pants catching uh fire. But uh fortunately he puts it down. Not looks like it and the other gang members. I look at him, yeah, they have to save him, they have to get some help, they try to get uh, Trey, uh, get some help. But, uh, yeah. DK comes running after him, but uh, one of the gang members uh, stands in his way, blocks his way, and uh, he tells him, PT, let's go, fuck that, I'll meet you at the hospital. And uh, he is about to, sh what you see from here, he has him in his, uh, he's on top of him, putting his weight on top of him. He has no, DK has nowhere to go, and uh, yeah, he's going to give him some uh, less poisoning, long story short. Oh, that's some good chamomile, good tea, and uh, yeah, he throws something in the, in the car, he smashes uh, the, the gun out of uh, the member's hand, the police starts coming, and uh, yeah, he starts to choke. He starts to choke him, but uh, also tells him rest in peace. Is he? D but there's typical. I can saw it coming here. We all know what's happening next. He's not. DK is not dead. He's bro basically on death at the moment. As long as his uh, necklace with his uh, quartz crystal. At least I, I think it's quartz. Could be something else like uh, like topaz or something. Aquamarine. It could be a burial or a night gate. It's basically the same thing as quartz, but with different colors. Either way, he's uh, he's choking to death. He tells him rest in peace, but uh, runs away. He thinks he had choked him to death, but uh, DK has other ideas. He can't die as long as his uh, necklace is still on, and he basically slits his throat with a piece of glass. Or at least it looks like a razor or something, and he's bleeding out. And he lies on the ground. The cops are coming, trying to uh, reanimate him, but he's uh, no response. And yeah, he's uh, sitting there, tongue uh, sticking out of his mouth, in a body bag. And uh, yeah, the police put him in the back of a van. And uh, yeah, <laughs> they can't bring him back to the morgue. And uh, yeah, Jess opens it up and DK comes out of there, like I expected, unscratched. And yeah, he tells him, what the hell, she is surprised, what the hell? And he tells him, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Did you do this? Yeah, of course he did this, what do you expect? That was kind of uh, predictable that he did that. <laughs> you could have seen that come. But uh, I like the way how it builds up to this. So. Nice way of, uh, yeah, I like how it flows from this to, from, uh, yeah, the fan, the police fan, to uh, this moment where he comes out of the body back, <laughs> unharmed. <laughs> it's kind of, uh, I know it's a dark story, but uh, there's some, uh, yeah, humor in it. And I expect, I expect it, and he, uh, of course, Jess helps him to remove the bullet wounds, but, uh, yeah. That's empty, right? Yeah. Yeah, she was worried about him, and yeah, there's uh, but the crystal is uh, yeah, still showing some cracks. The quartz crystal with the copper or golden chains around it. She was worried. And yeah. But bring it back and look. Does it hurt? No, he doesn't feel anything. And uh, yeah, she helps him to get stitched up and uh, to get the boots removed from his uh, body. Uh, yeah. Whoa. And 
and uh, he asked him about uh, she asked him about Marcus, but uh, the guy basically ch tried to choke him that to choke him out, and he asked him how or asked her I suggest to use uh, her phone, and yeah he uh, yeah she asked him why didn't you use your own she t he tossed it away because yeah didn't want to get, leave any traces properly. And he uh, used uh, the phone of this uh, one of the gang members called PT. He asked him, uh, and yeah, he asked him, "Hey, PT, why are you calling me?" I'm terrible at uh, giving that uh, accent. So uh, yeah, PT, why are you calling me on this number? Yeah, this sounds terrible. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> My uh, accent is too. Uh, used to the British English, so uh, let's keep it there. I got to grab the burn and killed the guy from and ran from the cops. Where you at? When's your birthday, huh? When's your birthday? What else is he talking about? It's you, the guy at the drink stand. He p and he figured him out. Some moment he see, realized that, ouch. He knows who he is. So yeah, he tried to be some vigilante, but he kind of let his guard down, let him know who, who the people were. And yeah, the crystal's still shining half yellow. The, don't there's a hidden meaning behind it. She asks him, she has a stiletto. Looks like a stiletto at least. And uh, he, uh, he got a certain po it, uh, She looks at it and yeah, no, she's not, to, she's not going to do it. And uh, Dicky tells him, she assumed was. And here, is, here he stands. Was like Trey or some other member, or another guy. Trey's dead. And here's the other guy. Here's the other guy, who's having a smoke in front of an emergency. In front of a hospital, having a smoke. But suddenly he drops a cigarette with a horrified look in his eyes. And that's about it. Thank you once again. I hope there will be another issue of this to uh, wrap things up because I like how the first one built up but uh, here you kind of see there are certain elements in it that you kind of see coming that uh, DK won't be it's kind of yeah for uh, revenge uh, horror thrillers the guy is, com is coming back and he avenges his uh, fallen friend but I hope there will be more to it to build it up Once again, the art itself is not a problem, the story writing isn't either, but I kind of like the first issue more. So I, this is kind of yeah, an in-between, uh, yeah, in-between, yeah, sto in-between story issues where, yeah, some things happen, it's starting to build up to another issue. It's kind of, uh, I think there's more on the, w on the way, it has to be, because, yeah, I have a feeling this is not the end of it, there will be more issues on the way. The, yeah, once again. Oh, this is the last page. So here you see the other guys. But uh, let's go back to uh, page to uh, the cover itself, to part one, to yeah, uh, the square one, or but or yes, at least the cover. The art, it's uh, the cover art is. I really like how it's designed. I, pr even though the other the first one was more colorful, I like this one. This one really gives uh, the horror vibe to it with uh, the mode of cocktail. Crystal and the lighter with uh, yeah, DK standing in the darkness. So uh, yeah, in the dark background. So that's uh, it's a really nice, uh, nice touch. It gives you yeah, you know he means business. That's what I like about it. Once again, the art style. There's nothing to say about the art style. The art style is fantastic. It's not too overcomplicated. Like I said, not too. Uh, not a, not a, not a, a lot of detail like for not a, so much detail like an Ethan Skyver who would pull off over John Malin, but it doesn't have to be it's his own thing and uh, I think uh, Marcelo did a quite good job at it and yeah but yeah you see he's not without its weaknesses if he removes the crystal from his neck he uh, basically returns back to the afterlife 
so that's a nice twist to it that he's not uh, indestructible he might be uh, undeath but he's not uh, indestructible and yeah and he also has to deal with, and what turns out to be was a nice surprise to it that he also has to deal with another voice inside his head that's trying to either coexist with him or maybe that uh, female voice will uh, attempt to take over his body I don't know there are a lot of possibilities that this could go uh, with it's kind of open ended I like that and uh, yeah here's uh, Trace that of course I can make a mistake right there my apologies in advance and he uh, he's going to avenge uh, he guys is probably going to avenge the death of his friend Marcus he's going to uh, yeah but yeah every time he uh, he enters a body bag he gets he comes out of there alive as long as his uh, necklace is intact and yeah just uh, tries to help him out and uh, yeah as you might see here this kind of open ended here at the, at the emergency room close to uh, yeah, the hospital you see the g I really like how it flows into each other but I have a feeling that especially with this that uh, there's more on the way and yeah for let me say it is it's not it's kind of uh, like I said, horror, revenge uh, thriller, it's not really my cup of tea, but I like the first issue. The second issue is okay, but feels like kind of in between uh, things. It's not it's not uh, bad or terrible. It's also, yeah, I think it, it could have been, yeah, or maybe this part of this an in between issue, but I, I like the first issue more, but it's personal preference. I really like the flow of it, but. Uh, so otherwise certain things are you can't see coming but yeah there's no disconnect between the art and uh, the in interior art and the cover art yeah once again we really like how it flows and in from panel to panel the flow is uh, there's no uh, the pacing there's nothing wrong with that there's, there's certain things that uh, yeah I said some things that you can't see coming there's nothing wrong with that uh, yeah, I have to be fair. I like the first issue more than the second one. So, uh, art is uh, the art's once again 8 out of 10. The, the writing, etc., is uh, this one is yeah, probably an in between uh, issue where you where it builds up for the next one. So, but uh, yeah, there's some things that you see, can't see coming. So, I give that a 7 out of 10 this time. The eight, yeah, it's good. If it's not. It's this close to uh, yeah, meeting this, meeting the, the first issue. But the first issue has, can't get me hooked, hooked on it. Here, I hope the next, I hope that the third issue, if it comes, and the fourth will uh, live up to the expectations. To this, of the same one. This one is yeah, I liked it, but there were some things in it that you could have already seen coming. There's nothing wrong with that, but writing etc pacing nothing wrong with that 8 out of 10 the pacing is 8 out of 10 or at least 75 well pacing writing 7 is 7 out of 10 and uh, once again lettering is what you expect of it so this issue gets an uh, 75 out of 100 for me it's uh, yeah once again it's this close to meeting the first one but there are some things in it that you can't see it coming and therefore yeah it's not as strong as the first one but uh, maybe the third one will probably uh, compensate on that I hope it does there's a good connection between the interior art like I said and the cover so the art and the writing there's nothing wrong with it but I hope certain, f certain things get concluded and uh, yeah I hope it happens on the next one so uh, once again very good job to uh, the comic book end. and uh, I'll take a sip of my tea and it's time to end the video so uh, my name is Spore Hacker if you'd like to see what time uh, to make me more videos like this reviews you can uh, yeah, leave a like comment subscribe if you want to retweet share if you're uh, if you're uh, 
social media circles, etc. It really helps the channel out, me out, and yeah. The Kickstarter is still going strong around, uh, yeah, it's probably s takes uh, around 60, 70 hours before it uh, ends, so uh, grab your copies quick. I personally went for the digital because uh, shipping costs, you all know, people who are more, f more familiar with the indie comics have more experience. Shipping costs uh, and crowdfunding, etc. The shipping costs are quite uh, yeah, expensive, especially when you have to uh, book have to uh, yeah, ship it all the way from the states. It goes from uh, 20 or 15 to 20 to 35, and I'm I'm similar similar in that uh, I have the same opinion like David Brink on that one. If it goes over 20 or 25, it's not worth to get. It's uh, yeah for me it's not worth getting the physical uh, because yeah I also have to pay uh, for uh, for shipping, but also pay that little thing called. Uh, VAT, that's kind of a tax on, on importing goods from outside the European Union. And it's, I think the latter is, uh, yeah, I know that, that they have to ta need tax to fi finance things, but this is kind of theft, according to me. I think Ripa would have agreed with that as well. But yeah, this Kickstarter is still going strong. I uh, post in the comment down below. And if you like to see what I created with my hard work friend Nev, Jarrow Warrior issue 1, Death of the Family, is available uh, on my own site, thejarrowwarrior.com. It's a vertical scrolling web webcomic. And if you'd like, uh, it's also on uh, Global Comics, where you, as a more traditional format. And uh, yeah, you can uh, change the format, you can read however you want to, and it's bilingual. It's both in uh, Espanol e and uh, English. So, so Netherlands. In Netherlands, we call in Dutch we call it uh, in Spanish and uh, in in Engels. So we yeah, have in uh, Spanish and in English. Yeah, sometimes a veces cambio de lengua. De lengua. Soms gebeurt dat. It happens. But uh, yeah. And if you like, to, if you after that you think, hey, this indie creator is quite good. Maybe you can help do something to help him out. Yes, you could. Jarrow Warrior is your Issue one is also available on uh, Gumroad, where you could get uh, for two dollars you could get the uh, the PDF and uh, the CBR file into one package for as much as yeah two dollars. Not too much, not too little, and it really really helped me out to get into the Discover program. So, but therefore I need you guys to help me out. Those who uh, are watching right now. I'll put the links down in the description. You probably find them as well in the in the first uh, video. And uh, yeah, I call it uh, I call it quits for tonight. T tomorrow I'll uh, I'll go back to writing and uh, prepare the creative writing stream of, for Friday. And uh, of course, if you want a physical copy of Jarrow Warriors One, you can send me a DM or uh, yeah, post on. Send me a DM on Twat or on Instagram, and uh, yeah, we see what can do, what I can do, and uh, that's all it is for this video. My name is Spore Hacker. Once again, congratulations to uh, Anthony, to Anthony and his uh, crew. I see you guys in the next one. Hasta la vista, Spore Hacker out.